All right guys, what is up? Welcome back. So today we're gonna get to the rest of the transmission assembly portion. We have all of the internal parts together and now we're gonna start putting the internal parts back in the case. So I did pick up this thing today. I'll show you what I'm gonna use that for. Basically to uh, lift the rear carrier assembly inside. I'll show you that thing. Let's get to it. Okay, so the first thing I'm gonna wanna do, preset this. So it's gonna grab right onto this shaft here. Take this rear carrier assembly, set this up, the thrust washer right in the middle. Then I'm gonna take the center support and run the center support down over the top. Until it locks down all the way into that sprag. And I'll clamp this right over into that groove inside this shaft right here. So first thing we're gonna wanna put in is the washer here. We're using this one, but you can kind of see where there's some, some wear all the way around, and then you can see where this was actually just rubbing on the case. So I'm gonna put that down. There's some little tabs that go around here. Put that down into place. And then I'm gonna take this piece, and I'm gonna put some assembly lube on there, because this is actually gonna stick onto the back side of that carrier assembly. You can see here, this is the back of the carrier assembly. So this is actually what's gonna stick to on the back side and then this will go down straight down like that this is show this a little bit better this is this carrier assembly here there's a little washer these little tabs that go inside these holes it just put some assembly lube on there to glob that thing on and stick it there so it doesn't fall down now that that's all ready to go next thing I'm gonna put in is the reverse band so this is the new reverse band you can see here there's these little notches there's actually two little pegs down inside here. So this notch back here is lined up where the reverse band servo comes through. And then these two little tabs are connected onto those little pins inside the case. You can see those two little tabs that stick out there. Those are gonna connect right into these two little notches here. Next thing I'm gonna do is put in this little snap ring. This little snap ring goes down uh, right onto this little bottom ledge here. And this is gonna go under the center support assembly. So next I'm gonna drop this whole large piece in. Uh, key part is where these holes line up. These two holes here and there's this threaded hole that comes into the bottom of the, the case. So those three holes are gonna need to line up down here. Those three holes come through right there. So you can see kind of where this little notch is. You're gonna have to line that up as you drop it in. Make sure that those holes are lined up in the right spot. With any luck, I'll be able to drop this in there without actually dropping it. Okay, that worked pretty good. So you can see we're fully seated in that next groove for the next snap ring is lined up nicely. Also have the center support holes lined up nicely. That worked out pretty good. All right, so let's pull that off. Next I have the beveled snap ring. This again, this is the beveled snap ring. You can see it's beveled kind of at the top right here. It's tapered down. So this beveled edge goes up this way. Let's throw this thing in. Okay. Doubled snap ring is in. Next, on top of the center support, we have the wave plate for the intermediate clutches. Don't forget that thing or you'll have to pull half the transmission apart to put it back on. Ask me how I know. So now for all of the intermediate clutches and steels. So I'm gonna start with a metal plate. So put the steel down. A little clutch. Steel and then alternating. So all these are in. There's the last clutch in steel. And then we have this uh, backing plate. This backing plate is going to go on the top. Beefcake, hold everything down. And then we have our intermediate snap ring that goes on there. So I got two snap rings here. This is the factory snap ring, and this is the HD2 kit intermediate ring that comes with the kit. So you can see there's quite a big difference. This is the HD2 kit ring, and this is the factory 
ring right here. So a lot stronger. So I'm gonna toss this one aside. And then we're gonna put this Beefcake HD2 kit snap ring in there. And this one is going to go in with the opening at the nine o'clock position, just like all of the other ones. So all three of these snap rings get placed with the opening at the nine o'clock position. So next we're gonna put in our front band assembly. Again, this little hole right here is gonna come on this little peg that's sticking out. So we have one to line up in the peg, and then we have this section that's actually gonna get pushed up with the little piston that comes in from the bottom side of the transmission here. So we're gonna line this peg up with the hole. So I'm gonna take this little piston. This is what actuates this one. Put it in there just to kind of show what it does. This is gonna be in position here. It presses this ring in to grab onto the direct drum. So that's that. So next we're gonna take the direct drum. We're gonna drop this drum down. It's gonna go inside that band that we just put down. And it's also gonna drop down in between all those clutches to verify that the direct drum is all the way down, just kind of lift up on it. You'll hear that higher pitch metal on metal sound. It takes a little bit. Uh, you'll hear it drop down, like if you do it like I did it. I heard it drop down like click, click, click a couple times, but I still had that thud sound, so I knew I was still on top of one clutch. And then I turned it a little bit and then it popped down. You'll hear that noise. Now again, we have a, a situation where we're gonna have to line up a bunch of clutches. See that the clutches are still kind of a little bit off. So I'm gonna take a flathead and kind of make sure that these are all lined up. This is kind of a tricky process. But yeah, these are just weird. It seems like it's, like one side's lined up, one side's not, so we'll try it again. Take this thing and drop it back down. We got that metal on metal. Drum is actually on the piston. So that was the install of the forward drum. Next we have this uh, bearing here. I'm actually waiting on a new one of these because this one's kind of a little bit crunchy. It's got some junk in it. So I'm waiting on a new one of these. So this isn't the final time it's gonna be together. I'm just doing it for the sake of the video right now. But next we got this bearing going on. And the next I'm going to install the fourth drum. So with the fourth drum, we have a hole in there, right here. And that's gonna be our hole that's in the case. That's gonna line up with this hole in the case right here. So we're gonna wanna make sure that that is facing in this direction and lined up with the case. And then this top ring here is also gonna be lined up on this little pin. So now that that thing is dropped in, that whole drum is dropped in, we can take the input shaft with the overrun drum and this whole assembly here We'll just drop right in. Okay, so after we have the overrun drum all the way in and seated, and you can tell again it's metal on metal, we're gonna take the gasket for the front pump and make sure that this goes on the right way. And I'm just reusing this gasket right now. I'm not gonna actually do it on the, the complete build, but I'm just doing this because I'm gonna have to pull it back apart again to change that bearing, but I wanna show you guys what this looks like. So we have this all lined up now. You can see all the holes are lined up all the way around. Now I'm gonna throw the pump on. Slide the pump over the top, and you can see this side, there's two mounting holes down here. And then if you were to like draw a straight line all the way across to where these holes are, there's three on the top side. And then there's two on the bottom side over here. I'm gonna make sure that these are lined up. And then next thing I'm gonna go do is drop all the bolts in. And then I'll torque these bolts down to 18 foot pounds. And you're pretty much done. All right, that's it for this one. The thing's pretty much together. Still gotta put, obviously gotta put the, the valve body and stuff on. And I didn't completely bolt it down yet because I wanna change that bearing. And I'm also gonna be installing the HD2 kit. I didn't completely assemble it, but that's the assembly of all of the in, internal parts and how to throw them in the case. Next, I'm gonna get that bearing. I'm gonna throw that thing in there and then I'll start going over the HD2 kit. So I've been kind of putting bits and pieces together as I'm assembling it of the 
HD2 kit installation. There's actually two parts. There's actually two different ways to do it. There's like a, if you were taking it apart section and there's a, if it's still together section for the HD2 kit install. I'd like to go through that thing. Hopefully we get some good detail out of that. So stay tuned. That'll probably be the next one or you'll see it coming up pretty soon. Thanks for watching. Hopefully you're enjoying the series. Be sure to subscribe if you're new. Have a good one.